Hi everybody. So now I want to talk about waves and sound. Um, I'm sure we have a good understanding of what waves are um, and how like sound operates. Um, hopefully I can give you a little bit more detail and everything to make it uh, a little bit easier. So first of all, um, I want to talk about like longitudinal waves and transverse waves. So basically, um, waves operate like sinusoidal, or some waves operate like sinusoidally. Transverse and longitudinal waves are like two of these waves that do operate sinusoidally. So basically, like an example of a transverse wave would be like, um, so a transverse wave, first of all, is a wave whose particles move perpendicular to its uh, direction of propagation. So basically, if a wave is moving this way, its particles are moving like this, right? Like, like up and down, like as it's moving. Um, an example of this would be like electromagnetic waves, right? Um, like light waves, for example. Um, now sound waves, for example, are an example of longitudinal waves. They move in the they move parallel to their direction of propagation. So like the way they're moving, the particles are moving parallelly, parallel to the direction. Um, sound operates in like compressions and rarefactions. Um, so basically, like sound particles have to like like sound needs a medium to travel. Like I should put that out there. So like air, for example, the reason you hear things is because like the air molecules are hitting one another till it gets to your ear, till the wave hits your ear. Then that's why you hear it. So sound like needs a medium to travel. Um, I wanna talk about the wave equation a little bit or some wave equations that you should know. So um, this is the most basic one. Um, v equals F lambda. Now this V stands for velocity. Um, you can measure that in maybe like meters per second. Um, sound travels at like roughly 330 meters per second, if I remember correctly. Um, this F stands for frequency. Um, this is just basically like um, how often the wave reaches a certain point. Um, that lambda stands for the wavelength. So, um, and hopefully like I'll, I'll talk about that, like what that means and everything. Um, there's also another formula you need to know. Um, T is equal to 1 over F. Um, this basically is just like, this is called the period. Okay, so you're going to divide 1 by the frequency to get the period. And this is basically just um, how long it takes a wave to complete. And I I I'll talk about what that means as well. Um, this omega is... Um, 2 pi f and this means so I also want to say that like f is also 1 over t right which means that this can also be written as 2 pi over t those are uh, these are all formulas that uh, are helpful to sort of figure out what's going on with the wave um, so I want to also talk about like like the parts of a wave so remember I talked about wavelength here Wavelength is basically the distance. Wavelength is a distance, and it's you can say like wavelength. Um, it's the distance between two successive crests, right? So um, I want to talk about what this point right here would be called. This right here is a crest, but funny enough, like so, this right here is a trough. And basically, so a wavelength, right, would be like the distance between here and here two successive crests, right? So like this would be like a wavelength. And we can call this lambda, right? This is a trough. Um, at the same time, there's another distance you might want to take into account. It's the amplitude. So like the amplitude is the distance from like the rest, like the, the rest point, not I mean, I'll say rest point, but like this is like the neutral point of like the wave, the neutral axis. It's that point to like the highest point. So like, like, like let's say the distance from here to the crest. So this would be the amplitude, and we can denote that with like A, so like that. So these are things that you need to like know. Um, so basically like the period is how long it takes the wave to go from here to here, for example, right? And the frequency, you can sort of, it's sort of intuitive. Frequency is how often that happens. So when we divide one by that, right, that's what we get. So um, that being said, T has generally given it like, maybe like seconds. So frequency, of course, would be like one over seconds. Um, this omega right here um, is the, uh, what does omega stand for again? 
Omega stands for, let me double check myself. Omega is the angular frequency, so it's another type of frequency. Um, you know, like sine, like sort of takes into account like pi and things. That's why like when we're dealing with that, we have to include that pi there. Um, um, let me talk about the principle of like superposition. Um, so basically, superposition just basically says if, if I know that something is A at one point, and I know that it's B at another point, um, at a point that would include both A and B, I can add those two up to get A plus B. So it's like A plus B equals A plus B, of course. Like that's, that sounds sort of like, oh, like of course that's common sense. But like, let's say I had a wave that did this. Imagine that these are the exact same, like this is the exact opposite, right? Of this wave, right? The principle of superposition says that, like let's say there are two waves, right? Um, I'll give, for example, like noise canceling headphones, right? What noise canceling headphones do is they hear, hear sound coming from outside and they produce waves that are like the opposite of those waves, the, the sound waves coming into the headphone so that it can level out to zero. Because when you add them out, there's something called destructive, um, constructive and destructive, uh, let me double check myself, interference. Constructive and destructive interference. This is like destructive interference because this wave is like, you can look at it as like negative, you can look at this as positive. When you add them up, they level out to zero. So like the resultant might be something like this, right? Like what's going on on this neutral axis, oops. It might be something like this, right? So um, that's the principle of like superposition. Likewise, if I had one, like a wave that was maybe like, maybe a little bit higher, right? It's not the exact opposite. Maybe the resultant wave might look something like this. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it would be, it would be lower, you know, like, but like that would be like my resultant wave, resulting like if this were the wave I were dealing with, right? It would be in between this, or maybe it might be a little bit higher, right? Because it would be closer to this. It would be further away from zero on the positive side than it would be on the negative side, is what I'm trying to say. So you add them up. Um, constructive, uh, constructive interference is like if we have like a wave that is also positive, right? So then they both add up to maybe like make like a higher wave or something like that, or, or a greater wave. Like, a, or like it's the amplitude that's affected is what I'm trying to say. So um, I think that's a good introduction. Um, if anything was unclear, please go ahead and leave comments in the comment section. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, let's keep learning, okay? Thanks.